Welcome to the Simply Soul Homestead. Today I'm in the pantry, which is part of our kitchen. It's the prep part. If you haven't seen our small house pantry tour, make sure you go check it out. We live in a 900 square foot home with us, our three kids, and one on the way. And today I'm in the pantry and I'm going to show you guys how to make kombucha. So if you've never heard of kombucha, you're going to want to watch this. I'm going to teach you exactly what to do from start to finish to make your own homemade kombucha. It is a wonderful drink, especially when days are warming up. It's nice to have it when it's hot outside to have a flavored drink. You can basically what kombucha is, if you don't know, it's a fermented tea. So we're going to make tea today. Let it ferment with what's called a SCOBY, which is in here. I'll tell you more about it in just a second. But you will ferment it and then you'll get to make your own kombucha and flavor it and all those things. So let's get started. All right, so let's start out by talking about what you need to make kombucha. So what you're gonna need is black tea. This is the tea you're gonna make to ferment. So we're gonna use black tea. I just bought all this from Walmart. You can buy organic if you want, but we keep it simple. You can get what we can without having to order it. So black tea, we're gonna make hot tea in just a second, and then we're gonna put sugar in it, which if you know my family, we don't do sugar. We stay away from refined sugar. We've hit almost I guess it's been nine years since we went sugar-free, so we stay away from refined sugar. We use things like honey, maple syrup, coconut sugar, things that are more natural and not so refined and processed. But for this, I've tried it with honey. It works part of the time. It doesn't work part of the time. I've had gnat problems with it. So instead of doing that, we just went to sugar because we let it ferment a little longer than most kombuchas and it ferments most of the sugar out. But you need the sugar to feed your stoby. So this is your SCOBY. If you're starting kombucha, this is the one thing you need to find from someone else. You can order these online. You can find them at some natural food stores. You can find a friend that does it and get you a SCOBY. So these SCOBYs have been sitting in here all winter. This is called a SCOBY Hotel. You can still see there's some kombucha on the bottom liquid, but they have just grown and grown and grown. So as you make kombucha, your SCOBY grows. You'll eventually have to separate it and make it smaller, which is what we'll do today. And then, after you've let this ferment for a week or two, you are going to need some of these bottles, these little spring top bottles. You can buy these at the Dollar Tree, Target, anywhere, but you can order them on Amazon. But they make it where you create fizz. The second, the first fermentation goes in here with the SCOBY. The second one, you take it out of the SCOBY, you sit it in here, and it creates a fizz within your kombucha. So you'll want probably, I think I use about three and a half of these bottles for my gallon size jar. This is just old pickle jar. So you need an old pickle jar. I've started with a half gallon one before and I moved up to a gallon when someone had one that I could have. So that's what we need. So, oh, and then also boiling hot water for your tea. So, okay. So let's get started making our tea that will then ferment with our SCOBY. So I have a, a bowl here. You can use a pitcher or anything you need to, but you want to make your hot tea in a separate bowl. If you put the hot in with the SCOBY, it will kill the SCOBY. So I've already boiled my water. I'm just gonna pour it in here. I'm not real worried about how much because I'll just make it to the gallon when I pour cold water over it in my jar later. But I did pour a good amount in there and I'm gonna start with eight tea bags for this one gallon. So if you're doing a half gallon jar, you're gonna use four tea bags. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for today, I'm gonna be giving you measurements for a one gallon jar of kombucha. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna put all of these in here and then we're gonna let it sit and we're gonna let the tea steep and then we will add some sugar to sweeten our tea. You wanna make sure you do that while the tea is hot. This is probably obvious, but so that the tea, or so that the sugar, uh, you know, mixes in with the liquid and doesn't just sit as sugar on the bottom like it would if you put it in with cold water. So we're gonna let this sit for a little while and then we'll come back and add sugar, take the tea bags out. Okay, so while we wait for our tea to steep, it's hot and steaming over here, mixing them with the tea bags, I'm gonna show you the SCOBY. I'm gonna get it out and show you how it works. So what is a SCOBY, if you're wondering? I have to look it up, I don't have it memorized. It is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. And so it is created from fermenting tea and we, uh, it's what we use oh, to ferment our kombucha. So that has a little crack in it, but 
Smells very vinegary currently, and I'm gonna take them out and show you. Okay, so with a SCOBY, you don't wanna put metal to it. You always wanna use a wooden spoon, things like that. Uh, people say it doesn't always matter with things like other fermented things, but it does with the SCOBY because it can kill your SCOBY, and you don't want that because then your kombucha won't work. But this is a SCOBY. It is very slimy, interesting texture. Uh, if you have kids, if you're homeschooling your kids, it's a really fun thing to uh, look into if you have a microscope, if you just to play with and see and learn about. It's very interesting. So, like I said, it builds layers. Every time you make kombucha, your SCOBY will grow, get new layers on it. So if you start and your SCOBY is like a tiny little chunk of this, which is fine, like just a little chunk, it will float. And then you'll notice a layer to start getting on the top of your jar. And you might think, oh no, is that mold or something like that? It's not mold, so don't worry about that. But I'm going to get rid of this. I can put this in my compost. I could give it to someone if someone wanted it. But because this one has been sitting all winter, we have layers upon layers of SCOBY. So this is like the same. <laughs> Double that. So I'm going to be getting rid of... So I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of SCOBY and just leave a little layer in here. So as you can see, here's more SCOBY and this one's been on the bottom. It's really been enjoying all that yeasty stuff. I kind of think I'm going to leave this one in there um, and let it work. So another thing you need when you make kombucha is a bottle. Whoo, it's sliding. <laughs> is a bottle of kombucha. So I have some kombucha left in here, but that's not even enough because it's just drank all of it up. So I'm going to have to add a bottle of kombucha to my tea when I pour it in there later after it's cooled off. And you need to get a bottle of kombucha as well to do this. Now I'm going to figure out somewhere to put all this scoby in my dirty hands. Now that your tea has had time to steep, you can remove the tea bags. You're going to measure out one cup of your sugar and you're going to add it to your tea. Remember, this sugar will be fermented out mostly if you let your kombucha sit for one to two weeks because the yeast part of the bacteria in your SCOBY will eat the sugar away and that's what ferments your tea. Now we're going to cover it and let it cool because you want it to be cold or room temperature when you add it to your SCOBY. Now I'm going to add this in to my big gallon sized jar with my SCOBY. And then remember I told you I did a concentrated amount of tea. So to top it off, I'll just add some cool water to it. Then once again, you're going to get any kind of kombucha from the store and you're going to add that in there. It gives it the bacteria that it needs to get started with your SCOBY. So I'm going to pour this in there and add it all together. And then your kombucha is ready to sit and ferment. You want to cover it lightly with a cheesecloth or I have a tea towel and a scrunchie, really fancy here, that I use to cover mine and you're going to let it sit for one to two weeks. After seven days of it sitting, you can get it out and taste it. Remember to use a wooden or plastic spoon, don't put metal in there, and you're going to taste it and see if you like it. Is it sweet enough? Is it sour enough? How would you like it to be? And if you want it to sit a little bit longer, like I said, we tend to ferment ours longer and it's a little more sour. But once it's ready, you can start drinking it and you can come back for part two to learn how to flavor and get the fizziness in your kombucha. I hope this how to make kombucha video was helpful for you. I'm excited for you guys to try making kombucha at your own home and I hope you love it. So now it's time to flavor our kombucha. So the first one we're going to do here is from a hot peach tea. So just a peach tea you would make in a single serve glass. I just put a bag in with hot boiling water, add in some honey. I'm just going to fill up a tiny bit of my spring top bottles with that to add some flavor. So what this does, it's going to flavor your kombucha, which you don't have to flavor. It's still delicious unflavored, but it is fun to add some flavor. Plus adding a little bit more sugar naturally from honey or from fruit as you infuse and flavor your kombucha 
is going to add the fizziness which we want. So if you take a look at that SCOBY I'm going to pull out, I'm showing you how much it grew. All of this part that I'm showing you grew over the past two weeks that this was fermenting the black tea. And my son wanted to touch it and see how it felt. Slimy, of course. But you, like I said, you don't have to flavor your kombucha, but it is just so delicious. And when you add some extra sugar, like I said, in these I'm using either honey or regular fruit. When you add that, it adds the second fermentation. So after I add the kombucha on top of the flavored peach tea that's sweetened with honey, I'm going to close these spring-loaded bottles and leave them sitting out on my counter at room temperature for another week or so. And that's going to allow the fizziness to build, which just makes it really, really delicious. So as you see, I'm topping this bottle off as well to fill them up. And then I'll show you the second flavor I did was a blackberry flavored kombucha. So I spilled it a little, but I had put cooked down some blackberries with honey and I'm just using the juice. So I'm really trying to keep the berries out of it just because it allows me not to have to filter it later. So I'm just putting that blackberry juice in there as much as I can get. And I'm going to do the same thing. Allow that honey and then the fructose and the blackberries to help add that second fermentation to let that the yeastiness within the kombucha to keep feeding on it and create the fizziness in the drink, which just makes it so fun and delicious. So like I said, these will sit on your counter and each day over the next week, you are going to pop the tops. So you're going to open the tops of the bottles. This is called burping the bottles. And you do this because it's building that gas, that fizziness inside. Just like if you bought a soda at the store and there's fizziness, you want to pop the top so that you can let that air out and that gas out. Otherwise, your bottle could pop and explode everywhere. So you want to do that. So you're going to leave it sitting for the next week or so. When you get it to the right fizziness that you enjoy, you can put those bottles in the fridge and they will it will slow down the fermentation. They won't be getting overly fizzy or be at a place where they're going to pop unless they're left in there for like a month. But they are delicious. So now I have two peach kombuchas, a blackberry kombucha, and just a regular and here we are trying the regular kombucha. I hope you and your family do this. It's delicious. It's a great flavored drink that is healthier for Ooh. you and has tons of good probiotics for gut health. Hope you enjoy and make sure you follow and subscribe to the Simply Soul Homestead channel.